<laughs> okay, excellent. So just to uh, remind you again, uh, the session will be recorded and we will share the recording at the end of the session. So the hack event will take place next week from uh, Monday to Wednesday um, for working people. So every day after six o'clock, uh, we will start the hack event and we will stay, or let's say the, the event is scheduled until nine o'clock. But if you want to hang around longer, then you're free to do so. Um, we have our coaches there and mentors from Augmental, Michael and Jan, and uh, potentially even some more of their colleagues. Augmento is, um, is a startup that is focusing on um, analyzing sentiment data um, to help traders make, uh, or to simplify and help traders make better decisions in trading cryptocurrencies. Um, I think from my side, there's not much more to say about uh, the hack event, besides that we are also looking for uh, typical crypto traders to attend. So not only the techie guys, but also um, people who trade on a regular basis, who uh, could come up with strategies when they look at the data and who could give uh, feedback on how certain strategies will play out on the market. Um, however, Michael and Jan will also go into details about um, the typical roles we want to see in one team. So the team matching will start at the beginning of the event. Uh, we already took some time and thought about which roles would be, uh, would be necessary in each team. And then we will have a quick survey at the beginning of the event and then match you up uh, in the right teams. Great. Then I would say Michael um, and Jan could uh, quickly introduce each other. And then we will start with, um, with Michael going over um, Augmento itself as a company and also the opportunity they see in the markets and some things they learn. And then Jan will describe um, the details of the data set they have prepared for our hack event. I will give over the word now to Michael and um, you can also start sharing your screen now. Sure, thank you, Pierre. My pleasure. All right, can you guys see my screen? Yes, looks good. Perfect. <laughs> All right, thanks. Uh, yeah, as Pierre said, I'm Michael. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Augmento. Uh, my personal background comes from trend research. I've been working in trend research for 10 years. Um, Jan represents more the technical side of the team and he will also take more the technical part of the presentation. Um, to give you a short introduction to, to who we are, uh, we started as a company in 2015 with the vision to augment, as our name says, like augment human decision making. And we have like, we are very interdisciplinary team. So we have people from big data engineering from machine learning background, but also the social science part. And uh, we bring those talents together to, to work on predictions and to monitor social, social sentiments online. So we've been working for a long time with large corporations and political institutions like the European Parliament to monitor opinions and to find out about trends in the market. And since about one year, we really focus on cryptocurrencies. We also uh, raised the angel investment round just specifically to build a product in that field. And yeah, I wanna start with something that you've probably seen before. It's the Wall Street cheat sheet. And it's, it's quite funny because it got viral in the crypto community and crypto Twitter. And that's, that shows some wisdom that Wall Street knows already for a couple of decades, namely that uh, emotions and sentiments really shape the market cycles. And probably if you look here on, on this chart, it looks very familiar. Maybe you experienced it yourself in the last couple of months. And so one, one second. I think uh, your presentation is not keeping up. So I still see the first slide. Okay. Do you see anything changing now? Um, or let me ask in a different way. Is anyone um, in the webinar right now who sees a different slide? I oh, my screen just frozen. Ah, we can see, indeed. Yeah, I see some participants. You should see the Wall Street cheat sheet now. Um, no, I'm, I only see the... 
first side and it looks like everyone else does as well. But it's okay. If you uh, stop sharing and then click on sharing again, we should be able to yeah, see. Let, me, let me try that. Ah, yeah, exactly. So maybe we, we jump back uh, a few slides and <laughs> start from there again. Can you see the Wall Street cheat sheet now? Yes. yes. All right, so I think it was related to the full screen mode. So yeah, that's the team. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I will just continue here with the Wall Street cheat sheet. Sure. Uh, so yeah, probably you've seen it before, probably you've felt some of the emotions. Um, the main theory behind it is that like market cycles are shaped by investors' psychology. And we would even like to go a step further because we think psychology does not only shape market cycles as a whole, but also price, move, price movements on an hourly or daily basis. And yeah, why we are so excited about the crypto data set is because it's very unique that crypto is really an online phenomenon. It's global, it's 24 seven. So we never saw so much social, uh, social data produced on any other topic before. It's more than 1 million daily posts and articles on social media and, and the news outlets where people really share their opinions, their strategies, they share their sentiments on the projects, they share when they have problems and so on. So this is an unbelievable valuable treasure but the problem is it cannot be captured by a limited, uh, by a person, by a human being. You cannot read that all and of course uh, some of you might uh, try to like make your own Twitter feed and so on but you really cannot capture the entire market. And that's why we thought like, it would be really amazing to, to build a tool that can actually do that for you. And we started to, to look into sentiment analysis and we were very disappointed in, in the beginning already because if you look at current sentiment analysis tools, um, mostly they can capture only negative, neutral and positive. And so that gives not, doesn't give you enough feeling on what the market thinks and, and what, it, what it is about. And even bigger problem, um, of course, those sentiment analysis tools cannot capture the crypto specific and the trading specific language. Um, so that means like all the technical terms from trading, but that means also the, the jargon that, that emerged out of the crypto industry. And that's why we started to build our own tool. And basically what we did is we dig really, really deep into the data and also made some industry yeah, survey. Pardon? Oh, sorry, is there anyone uh, not on mute right now? On mute. <laughs> ah, I see Lucas here is not on mute. Now he is. All right, thanks. So basically what we did is like we dig really deep into the data and we classified the topics that seem to be price driving and seem to have an effect on the market, at least under certain market cycles. And so we came up like with 115 different topics of discussions and also emotions that we can capture and quantify in the market. So basically you can imagine it like an AI engine that in real time rips every social media post apart and classifies the different parts of the sentences into topics and, and emotions. Like for example here, if somebody says, I definitely feel shitty about that, so we will register that as sad and frustrated. Um, yeah, and now I actually would like to hand over to Jan to get a bit more into the technical parts and explain what we already tried out with, with the data we, we generated. Hello, everybody. Um, as Michael mentioned, um, the starting point of, um, of our idea was that uh, we decided that existing solutions are not sufficient for what we're trying to um, to learn because first of all there is this very specific uh, language rela related to um, financial uh, discussions and related to cryptocurrencies and blockchain and second uh, there is also much more to the sentiment than just positive and negative and particular more granular emotions can also be very interesting and 
apparently can also be uh, predictive of the um, of the market changes. So what we did was we built a proprietary large data set annotated by experts in crypto trading and in blockchain. And we used the data to train a model, uh, to, train a, to train a sentiment classifier, which uses um, a combination of machine learning uh, techniques and linguistics, which add the additional layer of um, semantical understanding of the data. Like, for example, um, understanding uh, the negation when somebody says, this is not nice. It is certainly a, uh, a, negative, uh, a negative statement. Can, uh, can you show the next slide, please? Um, sentiment analysis, as you all know, is very hyped recently. So you might be wondering, if the research actually supports its usefulness and its predictiveness. Uh, if you look at the academic papers, actually there's quite a lot of research going on in this, uh, in this field. There's quite a lot of papers that are dealing with price prediction using sentiment, uh, both in traditional stock market and in cryptocurrencies. Many of them actually report a very high price prediction accuracy with uh, sentiment data. And also, one could notice that many of them are also overly optimistic with that. And I will talk about that later. Um, and other things that seem to be uh, confirmed by the academic research is that um, emotions seem to be predictive in short term, while fundamentals seem to be more predictive in long term, which is also, which is also quite intuitive, I think. Um, that finance specific sentiment analysis performs better. This relates to some research uh, conducted by people who tried um, doing sentiment analysis using uh, certain lexicons. So you can do sentiment analysis with manually build lexicons of, of words which are annotated by, by different sentiments. And there are some uh, lexicons built specifically for financial data. However, they do not capture the cryptocurrency specific vocabulary and also they're not, not very granular. Uh, another thing that was also mentioned in many papers or at least, well, maybe not many, but at least in some papers is that basic sentiments may not be enough to, um, to capture the overall emotional state of discussion and uh, you can actually get better results if you also look at other more granular emotions. So one thing that was uh, that I've seen that I've seen in in, in some papers was that um, you can try to track at least five or six basic emotions. Uh, there are also, also lexicons for that, but on the other hand, those lexicons do not include the crypto-specific vocabulary. So in general, it's uh, again not sufficient to, to capture what we want. Uh, some some papers confirm that disagreement between users can be predictive. So uh, you can of course model disagreement in different ways. Um, you can you can see how a um, high number of positive and high number of negative comments or posts at the same time can be an indicator of disagreement. You can think of it in some other ways, but in any case, predicting emotions um, with uh, some more granular granular classes than just positive and negative uh, can be also useful for that. And finally, different data sources um, have different levels of predictiveness and can also be predictive in different time intervals. For example, it has been shown that uh, Twitter, which is a um, very fast-paced social media, is more predictive in a very short term, like maybe um, some hours or sometimes even minutes, according to some reports. While, for example, for example blog posts or um, internet forums like Bitcoin Talk are more predictive in longer term. So they do not uh, influence the market 
directly but only with some longer time lag and next slide please <clears throat> encouraged by these results which overall show that uh, there is a big potential in uh, predicting market changes with sentiments we wanted to try um, to try to experiment on our own and here's a couple of things that we learned first of all um, there is a significant difference between um, the approach of uh, using classification and uh, of using regression so if you um, if you're familiar with machine learning you of course know that with regression you're trying to predict a continuous variable like for example directly predicting price or directly predicting uh, price changes while in classification you can attempt to predict things like when the price is going up or down or perhaps uh, when the market is going to crash or maybe when is the good entry point for trading there's a there's many different things you can want you can you can try to predict and uh, i will talk about it later and uh, to give you some some tips and ideas of what you can try to do with the data um, another thing that we learned is that it pays off to go a bit deeper than just counting tweets or posts and uh, just using the absolute number of let's say today there was there was 100 positive comments on, on a forum it actually is less informative than looking at related numbers where for example you can see that the amount of discussion uh, the amount of positive discussion uh, on a certain certain media made up for let's say five or ten or ten percent of the overall discussion or maybe comparing this to calculate something like ratio between positive and negative uh, sentiments and this is also one thing that um, we found as perhaps the most uh, interesting or most predictive single indicator in our data but you can also try different combinations as michael mentioned we have over 100 different um, sentiments and topics that we that we are tracking mm. so obviously some of them are more uh, interesting than others um, but i think there's quite a lot to explore so also uh, quite a lot to learn um, and finally um, oh not finally yet <laughs> uh, we uh, learned a lot of things that are um, that are interesting to try and we also identified some some pitfalls and problems that should be avoided so i will also talk about it a little bit later um, and finally an um, important decision at the beginning is to identify the task that you actually want to take to so identify what you're actually trying to predict uh, are you trying to predict the price which seems like the obvious um, um, as the obvious option at first but you can also try to maybe spot a good entry point and perhaps this kind of this kind of analysis is more useful if uh, your goal is to use it for trading uh, next slide please um, here are some examples of um, what can be found in the data um, those examples that I'm showing you are, um, are using some older data and some older versions of the classifiers, but still it's some of our attempts to, to look for interesting stuff in the data. Here you can see um, Bitcoin data um, and the relative numbers of uh, technology and investing discussion. So the orange line shows the um, fraction of the total discussion which was related to investing or trading while the blue line shows you the relative amount of discussion about technology and uh, of course anybody can make their own attempt to interpret this data but you can already see some interesting pattern here so while investing and trading was usually much higher than technology for most of the most of the time frame shown here 
it actually flipped at some point and you can see that the moment where the investing uh, discussion started going down rapidly and technology started going up was actually very close to the moment uh, when the price was collapsing in the market at the beginning of last year so i think um, there's much more uh, much more to learn and to explore here but uh, you can already see that there is something interesting going on so i guess there's i guess you can you can find a lot of things like this in the data uh, if you are willing to dig a bit deeper uh, can i have the next slide <coughs> um, here is one of our early attempts to try to predict how bitcoin price was changing uh, using twitter data uh, the results shown here are the outcome of um, walk forward validation uh, of uh, our models so for those of you who are not familiar with the technique of walk forward validation this is um this is like a version of uh, cross validation that is more appropriate for time series data because when dealing with time series you cannot uh, randomly pick your training and testing set because you don't want to contaminate um, your data with what you're trying to predict and uh, because in time series the order of uh, data points is always important because it is always past that influences the future and not the other way around so uh, the basic idea of walk forward validation is that you only take the first part of the data the oldest part of the data you train your model on it and then you take for example next month or next few months uh, for testing and in next iteration you also use this months that you use for testing included in the training set and basically walk forward so you move the time the time window forward uh, you always uh, in each iteration you have a bigger training set but you always test on a set which hasn't been seen by the classifier yet so in this case it is kind of um, expected that in the first few iterations the model was not performing very well because it has seen very little data in the training process but if you go if you go further it actually improves um, perhaps it's not uh, it's not great and the dashed the dashed line is showing the baseline model which is trying to predict the price based on a recent uh, recent change so it doesn't it doesn't know anything about sentiments the baseline model it only knows the price how it was yesterday or two days ago and it tries to predict uh, tomorrow's price based on that so as you can see um, you can um, this model can already beat the baseline uh, in most cases sometimes uh, achieving quite quite impressive results this model was um, optimized for f score so as you can see um, the red line and the yellow line which are very closely correlated here uh, the yellow line represent accuracy and the red line represents the f score and as i will uh, as i will tell you later um, it is a good idea to optimize for the highest f score uh, if you're dealing with unbalanced data can i have next slide please so uh, what is the goal of the hack days um, as you can see um, we already did some experiments with our data but obviously so far we've been focusing mostly on building our sentiment analysis tool and now we think that uh, the fun part begins and we want uh, to share what we have with the trading community so that you can experiment and build trading strategies on or basically see what you can what you can find in this data and we're very excited to uh, to see what you can come up with um, can i have the next slide and here's a couple of things that you can try um, of course, we want you to use your own creativity and your skills, uh, but based on what we learned so far and what um, we've seen so far in the data, we can recommend some 
a couple of things that you can try and also point out a few things that you should avoid. Uh, in this slide, you can see a bunch of ideas. It's kind of unstructured. It's just, uh, just, a, just a bunch of things that we think could be interesting and uh, that you could consider as something to work on during the hack days. As I mentioned before, uh, there are multiple approaches you can take um, with predicting market changes. You can go for classification. And then the probably most basic idea is to predict when the price goes up, when the price goes down. On the other hand, you can try to predict a buying or selling points. And the difference will be probably that um, you will look for large peaks or large crashes, not just any price movement, because obviously, especially in the bear market, the price fluctuations will be sometimes uh, insignificant and maybe it doesn't make sense to uh, look for those changes but only for the more significant changes you can try to look for good entry points and uh, obviously this is uh, not a very well defined uh, notion what is a good entry point this is an open question uh, that you also can try to tackle and you can try to verify your own intuition about what a good entry point is uh, looking at this data Another approach would be uh, some kind of regression model, which can try to predict price or which can try to predict price change. From what we've seen, um, probably uh, regression is not the best thing to try to um, model if your goal is to uh, go to trading with this model. However, um, regression gives you a good overview of um, how your how your model actually performs and it can be interesting if you want to explore um, the data in if you want to better understand the relationship between different uh, variables in the data set of course there's some other things that you can look for you can look for um, identifying if the bottom has been reached if uh, the bubble is going to burst soon, you can uh, try to model volatility and so on and so on. Um, there's also always a decision of what kind of uh, dependent and independent variables you want to use for modeling. As I mentioned before, um, you can go for relative or absolute discussion volumes. So the absolute numbers will tell you how many items or posts or comments or tweets uh, was posted, while the related numbers will tell you uh, what is the fraction, uh, what fraction of the overall discussion this number represents. To make it easier for you, uh, we include both versions of the data already in the data set, so you don't have to calculate it yourself you will have separate files with absolute numbers and separate files with related numbers. You can choose what you want to use. You can try both. You can try to combine them. Um, I'm not going to <laughs> try to restrict you in any way. You can just try what works for you. You can try to predict price or price change. I think both can be interesting. Also, if you go for classification, you can go for price or price change. You can include all different kinds of um, um, variable, like you can try to calculate all different kinds of indicators based on this data, like moving averages, like trend changes, which would be, for example, to see how today's sentiment is compared to the um, average trend of last days or weeks or months. Um, you can try to calculate the ratio of positive and negative volumes or perhaps some other variables. You can go for market volume, you can go for volatility as uh, dependent variables. You can explore different time lags uh, to predict next hour, next day, next week, or maybe try to identify uh, and quantify exactly which, which time frame is the optimal for certain data sources. As I mentioned, it can be you can expect that it might be different for different data sources. And yeah, any variable, of course, can be transformed, normalized in different ways. 
So this is also something we can we can think about. Can I have the next slide, please? Um, yeah. So the pitfalls. <clears throat> I think many of those will be something very obvious to you, but uh, I think it's worth mentioning, especially as I've seen a lot of people making very basic mistakes sometimes, and uh, even highly trained experts sometimes fall for them. <laughs> you can even see many scientific papers where the results are actually unusable because of some very basic flaws in methodology. So I think it's always worth it to, to remind. So, well, some usual machine learning considerations to avoid overfitting, which can result in uh, in results which do not generalize well. You always have to predict the future, not the past. <laughs> that seems very obvious, but especially when you're dealing with a time series, you have to be careful with that, not to contaminate um, your training set with the testing set, um, because you don't want to the model to predict something that it already knows, then you don't you don't get reliable results and it's not going to be useful for any real life um, applications. This is closely related to walk forward validation instead of standard cross validation, as I explained before. Another important thing to consider is that um, your data set and that you will um, your variables um, that that you will um, that you will use will very likely have unbalanced classes if you go for classification. Of course, uh, this is because interesting events are rare. Most of the events, most of the time data data points, time points that you will consider are not what you're looking for. So perhaps five percent of uh, points in time will be actually interesting. Um, interesting points like big crashes or like uh, crazy bull runs or in general points where you will want to buy or sell as a trader or anybody who will want to train uh, trade on your models there it is generally a difficult problem in machine learning and it's still an open question how to deal with that but there is a couple of techniques that you might want to try to make it better um, a basic example is undersampling or oversampling for the um, underrepresented classes. You can read up on this, um, or perhaps you already know how to deal with that. <clears throat> and last but not least, uh, choosing correct performance measure. This is again related to the uh, imbalanced data set problem. So if you have imbalanced data, accuracy is often not, or maybe even never the way to go if you want to measure the performance of, of your models. That's because, um, let's say, if you have 5% of interesting points and 95% uh, of uninteresting points, then you can predict everything as uninteresting and still get 95% accuracy. So you need a measure that will take into account um, how different classes are um, uh, are predicted. Uh, the most popular way to do it is to use F-score that I mentioned before, um, which is uh, measuring the balance between precision and recall. You can also use the array under the curve. There is also G-mean, and of course a couple of other a couple of other measures that you can try. <coughs> um, yeah, I guess there is a there's a few other things that you should avoid, but this is what I thought was the most most interesting and most important to keep in mind. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? Yeah, and finally, the data set. I'm not going to talk much about it because um, I prepared a handout for you. So in the Dropbox folder, you have an entire document with description of the data set just next to the data itself. Um, but just shortly, um, you are getting a data for, right now it's three different cryptocurrencies, but uh, we should be able to prepare even more for you if you're, if you're interested. And you will get the data 
um, from Twitter and from Bitcoin Talk, you will have it aggregated by one hour or 24 hours, which means that basically the amount of posts or tweets or entries uh, published uh, during one hour or 24 hours. You can, of course, try um, to calculate different, different time intervals from this data. Uh, for each of these files, you have two versions, one with absolute numbers, so absolute amount of discussion and related numbers, which is the fraction of the overall discussion. You also have uh, a separate file, files for total bus, which is the overall amount of discussion around the um, given coin, which includes all the entries, even if they were not classified with any topic or sentiment. So this is going to be a bigger number than all of the topics and sentiments sum up uh, together. If you have any questions about this data, of course, we will be available for you um, on Telegram channel and certainly during the hack days. So feel free to ask. Um, thank you very much. Um, and if you have any questions regarding the presentation or anything else, uh, I guess now it's a good time to ask the questions. Exactly. Jan, thank you very much. And uh, Michael as well for uh, for the presentation today. I think it was uh, very interesting content. Uh, I already have the first question. Uh, could you guys please go in into detail in which kind of roles you see um, would be useful to have in a team at the hack day? Sure. Jan, do you want to take it? Um, yes, yes, I can answer this. Uh, well, it's really, first of all, it really depends on what, uh, what you want to achieve exactly during the hack days, because as I said, there's multiple different things that you may want to try. And I was basically only talking about predicting stuff, so about building models. But of course, um, you can just explore the data and already find very interesting patterns without applying any actual statistical analysis of machine learning. But I imagine that um, for most of the most of the cases, um, it would be nice to form groups where in each group there is at least one person experienced with uh, uh, programming and ideally data science or machine learning, and at least one person who knows something about about trading and cryptocurrencies. That's because um, I think it's very uh, one very interesting thing to do with this data is not just try to predict based on our data, but also try to build a trading strategy based on this and perhaps try to um, simulate trading. There are multiple tools you can use. I guess like, at least some of you or maybe all of you already know that. We can we will already talk about it uh, briefly uh, during the hackathon. Uh, so I think I think somebody who knows how to code, somebody who knows something about machine learning, and somebody who knows um, about trading and cryptocurrencies, this is essential. And of course, depending on what you're trying to do, um, I can imagine many many other um, roles that can can fit in a in a team. This is just like a bare minimum. I don't know, Michael, if you want to add something to that. Uh, no, actually, I think you covered it all. Yeah, so the basic team is somebody who knows uh, to pro how to program and something about machine learning and somebody who really knows how to trade and understands the crypto market. Excellent. So then in this case, I would also like to ask um, any of the other participants um, if they have any questions. Um, you can click on unmute yourself and then you can uh, share your questions here with the audience and the hosts. So, doesn't look like there's any. Then I will um, also have a few more. Oh, there is one. No? Yeah. Uh, I was just wondering um, if the, the link to the... Um file describing the, the data set, is that going to be published uh, with the 
recording of the webinar uh, at the same time or uh, is that on a different schedule? Uh, very good question. I'll, I'll take this one. Um, I think the link was already shared in, in the Telegram group. Also want to remind everyone that we're going to use the Telegram group of Crypto Trading Berlin to communicate during the hack days and uh, things will be shared there as well. But of course, um, I guess we will share the link here again in the comments of this event and then also in the details of the um, description of the recording that I will put on, on YouTube. Yeah. Michael, um, do you want to add anything to that? No, that's fine. That's fine. We're going to share it right after. Excellent. Um, any other questions? Okay, maybe I would like to add as well. Uh, again, uh, we have a Telegram group um, where we communicate uh, about most of the things regarding the community and then especially next week uh, regarding the event. I will share the link as well uh, to how to get into the Telegram group. And also uh, one thing I'd like to add is we're not going in uh, into this event with an expectation that you know, you have to <laughs> stay up 24 hours and, and uh, come to, come to um, uh, a big result of a prototype or something. Uh, I've, I've started these, uh, these, these hack days or this uh, hack event series um, so that the community get, uh, can get to know each other. You can sit together and, and work on something um, uh, in a team and maybe something fruitful will, uh, will start happening uh, out of this project. What, what would be great is if whoever is going to form a team um, is, uh, is going to present what they have done over, uh, over the hack days and um, what they have learned together and maybe what's, what they would like to continue. Um, so little presentation at the end of, um, of the hack days uh, um, will be expected from, from each group. But besides that, you're pretty free to do anything. Uh, and you're not, not having any uh, expectations that you have to deliver something or that is a challenge or like a typical hackathon environment. Just sit together and, uh, and have fun. That's the most important part. Okay. So I don't have to add anything else anymore. Uh, if there's anyone in the audience who still likes to ask a question now, now would be a good time. Um, again, on the bottom left, you should be able to click unmute and then you can speak. It's a little microphone button. And if not, then you can uh, send questions to, to Michael. You see his email here in the presentation on the, on the bottom left. Yeah, or you can also always send questions to me via meetup.com. All right, I would uh, say we conclude this webinar for today. I thank everyone for, um, for his or her participation. And I'm looking forward to see you all on Monday um, at the Unicorn um, co-working space in Brunnstraße. Until then, have a great evening and enjoy your weekend. Bye. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks. See you guys. Thank and you. Thanks also to, of course, to the augmented team for participating in this presentation.